Good morning, guys. Welcome to the start of a new vlog. Today is going to be a fun one. I am currently at home, as you can see if you're at all familiar with my apartment. Um, and I'm going to go to Fab Scrap today. Fab Scrap is a textile recycling center. They have one in Brooklyn and one in Philadelphia, um, where a lot of companies like fashion companies, uh, I'm not sure if like nor just regular people can drop off their stuff there or if it's just businesses. I have to look into that, but it's a textiles recycling company. And they also have like a little like showroom of like fabrics that are available for purchase that are large enough quantities that would be purchasable. One thing that they have that I'm really interested in going there for today is a lot of scrap leather, like good quality leather. And I've been wanting to get into bag making for a really long time, but I feel a little bit apprehensive about purchasing like a brand new nice leather hide and not knowing what I'm doing with it yet. It just feels kind of irresponsible, I guess. Um, Cause I've done that once and the project didn't really go as planned. So I'm thinking that I should start with some recycled leather, like stuff that's, you know, been put to fab scrap so that I can use the actual product I want to use, but not have to feel like the guilt of like using a brand new leather hide, if that makes sense. So yeah, so I'm going to Fab Scrap because they do have a nice selection of leather. And that's what I'm gonna go for today. In addition, I'm going to set up my Ditto pattern projector. So if you watched my Vlogmas, you will know that I won a giveaway of a Ditto pattern projector. And I'm so excited because I'm going to be taking a pattern drafting course that starts on Monday. And I really wanted to get a projector to use for sewing uh, ahead of that course so that I didn't have to like keep going back and forth to my local copy shop to get things printed. So I'm gonna set that up today as well. So Fab Scrap, setting up my Ditto pattern projector. Let's go. So the one bad thing about Fab Scrap is it's located like in the middle of nowhere in Brooklyn. It's not very pretty as you can see. We're in uh, Brooklyn Army Terminal right now, but hey, you know, I guess you do what you have to do to keep your costs down. Luckily, I could just drive the car today, so I drove rather than subwaying because it is quite a trek from the subway. So I'm looking for it now. Again, this building is huge, so it always takes me a little bit and asking lots of people for directions to find it in here, no matter. I think I've been to Fab Scrap like three times now. Um, yeah, it's always like a maze to find anything in this building, but we persevere. So this is sort of the color I'm looking for, but not leather. I don't know if the bag I want to make needs a lining, but if it does, these two would be good contenders. This one especially because it's kind of rip stoppy, it would be easy to clean. really excited. I got some absolutely incredible stuff at great prices. I went there for leather. I came out with a lot more than leather. I'll show you the full fabric haul when I get back, but long story short, if you are looking for leather and you live in New York City, definitely check Fab Scrap first. Their selection is insane. So many neutrals. I went there actually not to get a neutral because the bag that I would really like to make I can just envision it more in like a color. I really wanted a suede. So I was on the lookout for a green suede or for like a red or cherry red suede. I'm really into red right now, as is the whole fashion industry, it seems. But yeah, red is definitely my color. So I was on the lookout for that. I found some great burgundies, but yeah, I'll show you everything when I get back home. All right, let's hop in the car and I'll see you there. Okay, I'm back with two shopping bags full of goodies from Fab Scrap. So I really wish I could film this in my craft room, but unfortunately the light in there is just too dark. It's supposed to snow today, 
supposedly, um, but it's too dark to film in there, so I'm in our dining room. All right, let me show you what I got. I went for leather, like I said. I did find leather, and they had so many, uh, like, other amazing fabrics, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be starting that pattern drafting course soon, so I'd love to have some good fabrics for, like, wearable twalls of things that I have in mind. All right, the first one, probably the one I'm most excited about, to be honest, although there's so many good ones in here. This Plisse, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, fabric. I got three yards of it. I'm kind of wondering if I should have gotten more. This would make an amazing set, but all in all, like some sort of really cool top is gonna come out of this at the very least. Um, I could make a dress with it. Like I said, I bought three yards and they were very generous with the cut. They cut it with the pleats pleating or whatever. It's not really pleats, but you know what I mean, but they cut it with the pleats closed. So I got a lot of fabric in here um, for a really good price. And this was $10 a yard for this one. It's not a natural fiber that I'm aware of. Usually if they suspect something is a natural fiber, they'll do a burn test on the fabric and indicate if it's a natural fiber or not. And this one did not have anything on the tag, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not. But I would guess it's probably some sort of polyester blend. Typically I don't buy polyester fabrics, but I make an exception for stuff that I just think is really, really cool that I don't know if I could find in a natural fiber. Next up, I have a pair of Persephone pants in cream and a pair of Helene jeans in white. Both of them are ill-fitting on me now and I would really like to make another pair of white pants. So I saw this white denim, it has a little bit a stretch to it, not much, but a little bit of stretch. So I think this will be perfect to make another pair of Persephone pants in white because I would love to replace the ones that I have. You can see up close. Oh, there's a hair on it. Sorry. All right, so some white denim. Next up, another denim. This green and light blue. I don't know if the light blue is going to come off on camera, but it's like a forest green and light blue stripe. It's so amazing. I only got one yard of it because I feel like I was between, should I make shorts out of it or should I make a jumpsuit out of it? And the stripes are so narrow that I'm sure, cause that's making my eyes vibrate just looking in the camera viewfinder. But I'm sure that if I made this as a jumpsuit, like all over, it just makes the eyes vibrate too much. So I think it needs to be paired with something else like a white t-shirt or something like that to give the eyes rest. So I bought enough for shorts. If it was a wider stripe, I would have considered buying enough to make a jumpsuit, even though I'm not really a jumpsuit person, but I think a pair of like shorts jumpsuit, uh, not like a long jumpsuit would be amazing in this fabric. So this will be a really cool pair of statement shorts. Let's see here, that's the first bag done. All right, first in the next bag is this khaki, Den or it's twill, khaki twill weave cotton of some sort. So a khaki twill cotton. And I got this again to make shorts. I'm kind of wondering again if I should have bought more to make some sort of dress like a, I don't know, like safari inspired something just with the color I think is really good. And I think it goes really nicely with my skin tone. It's not too matchy matchy, but contrasts enough. So especially when I'm tan in the summer, this color will look extra good on me, I feel. Um, but I got just enough to make shorts. So I'll make some sort of cool shorts with it. Maybe I'll add some like cargo pockets or maybe I can make like a cargo pocket skirt with this potentially. Um, but I got like either a yard or a yard and a half. I can't quite remember of that. I bought two yards of this cotton, which is amazing. Let's see if there's a twill weave in it. No, there's no twill weave. It's just like a basic cotton. This will be a great like wearable muslin fabric. And it's this kind of like brownie olive color again super gorgeous i just really love this shade i think these kind of tones and colors look really nice on me um this could be a pair of like a shorts jumpsuit if i wanted it to be but i really got these to make pants i think this will make a great color pair of pants a very kind of neutral ish color and i think it's stunning so i loved that another natural fiber Next up, I'm going to show you fabrics that they sell by the pound. So if they have this kind of wall of roll-up fabrics, that indicates that it sold for $5 a pound at Fab Scrap in Brooklyn. So let me show you the ones I got from that. The first one is this kind of chartreuse green twill weave cotton. I got this as potentially to be like some sort of lining in one of 
uh, the bags potentially that I'm going to make, but I feel like this is a small amount, but will be good for lining things. I just really love that color. This one I am so excited about. Oh my gosh. I think it's an upholstery fabric. I'm not really sure, but look at this print. Look at the colors in the print. Isn't this so cool? I have absolutely no idea what this is going to be, and it's very heavyweight. Very heavyweight. So no clue what it's going to be. If you have any ideas, please let me know. That's the entire cut that was available. But I was not leaving without it. I think this is one of the coolest fabrics I've seen in a long time, and I absolutely love it. No clue what it's going to be yet, though. Frank has come to say hello but his eyes are really on the prize of jumping up to this cabinet over here no thank you next up this is definitely pleather but i liked the warm gray tone in it uh so this could be like a practice for a bag in the future before i use the real thing i did buy lots of leather which i'll show you in a second but if i want to practice first this would be a good one to try it out with before doing that this one which i showed you i think when i was in the store you can hear the texture on it I think it'll be great again for lining for something for many things honestly for a jacket for a bag for it's just kind of like got that nice like easy to clean texture to it and it's like this gray green color and then the last fabric that I bought in the by the yard section was this like lace which I'm still not sure if it's very me I feel like it could be a great little like 90s slip dress right it has some potential it's very high contrast for me so i don't know yeah i don't know holding it up to myself this one may have not been the best purchase but i don't know i'm still on the fence about it maybe i'll find a use for that that doesn't like overwhelm me it's a little high contrast for my taste but i do like um i liked it when i was looking at it so we'll see but yeah black lace with gold trimming and then last the leathers so first they have a scraps bin um, that they charge five dollars a pound like they do for the roll-up fabric so i got a few scraps the first one was this yellow butter yellow color i wish i could find a larger scrap of this but there was none to be had as you can see it is stained so i'm gonna test out cleaning it to see if it's possible to clean it it's not a very big scrap so I'm not entirely sure what I could do with it maybe I could make a really small bag out of it but I've loved this color for a long time so we'll see if I can get that stain out it looks like it was stained with blue dye of some sort so I'm not sure if it's going to come out but hey if it's sold by the pound it's you know like next to nothing for the cost and then I got some of these other scraps maybe to make like wallets or something like that again real leather scraps this these two are so buttery soft oh so soft in this like kind of peachy blushy shade got some dark green to match one of the larger leathers that i have another dark green these look like they're the same one i got this kind of like burgundy one and then this one's kind of a wild card this like yellowy chartreuse color I don't know. I love chartreuse. All right. Now, the reason that I went the leather. So let me show you what I got. So the prices for these, I'll show you the leather and the price. So this one was $25 for this little hide right here. And this really beautiful, like, burgundy chocolate color. So it's kind of a brown that leans into purple. It's really pretty. Next up. This one, which is firmly in the burgundy category, this one was $20. Isn't that stunning? Oh my gosh, I love that so much. This one's gonna be a little harder to use. It's not as big and it's kind of like coming away from this backing here. I'll have to see if there's something I should do to try to repair it first. But like I said, I went for like low stakes leather, something that was gonna be recycled and reclaimed uh, so that I wasn't using like something really brand new and nice. So yeah, I love the color though. I'm absolutely in love with that color. And then I got two greens that I'm pretty sure are the same like manufacturer. Um, this kind of beautiful olive green. So here's this one, gorgeous green. This one was originally for Ralph Lauren. So that's pretty cool. 
and then this one because they're literally like exactly the same i can't imagine that this one was from or for a different one there's no sticker on this one but they look so similar i'm pretty sure they're from the same one and here's another one just so i have more to make like a bigger bag if i want so i think i'm going to combine these to try to make a larger bag and both of those were 15 and 20 dollars each so that is my little fabric haul i'm really excited about what i got i think i got some like good neutrals i got some good patterns and prints um yeah i'm really looking forward to it so now my next step i'm going to clear away this fabric fold it up and put it in my craft cabinet and then i'm going to unbox the ditto which has been sitting in our dining room since it arrived and going to like try to set it up um, i have a bag pattern that i want to try to get going on it like as a first test that's again not in the ditto ecosystem like a bring your own pattern because that's apparently a new feature that it has now so I'm going to attempt to buy, I think the Etsy shop is called Motif Studio. I forget the name of the bag, but I'll check on that and get back to you in a second. But yeah, there's a bag pattern I want to test out making. Um, and so I'm going to test out the ditto with this new bag. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, guys, so I'm going to open up the ditto, but my address is all over the box, so I'm going to get it out and then I will be right back. Ooh, it's a Singer product or it's in a Singer box? It's a struggle goose over here. Don't go out of your way to help me. Maybe they'll want this new box. Exciting! Whoa. I know. Serious. All right, inside the box, a high-tech projector, cord covers, a rotary cutter, a beam, a bubble level, fabric weights, power cord, target stickers, an exclusive ditto cutting mat. You'll need a flat work surface, 37 inches by 25 inches, check. Flat ceiling, heights of seven and a half to 10 feet. Uh-oh. <laughs> Far foot, cause aren't ours 11 or ours are 10? Uh, I think they're 10, but flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a nearby outlet and Wi-Fi. All right, well, we'll see. All right, it is set up. That was super easy to do. Sorry, I didn't show you more of it, but I needed my phone to like look at some of like the connecting things for it. Um, but the instruction manual is really clear and thorough. So yeah, it was pretty easy to set up. Right now I'm sort of unclear though, if I need a subscription to use it if I'm only using my own patterns and not patterns within the Ditto ecosystem. So that kind of remains to be seen. If I have to have a subscription for it, that's a little disappointing because I could just use any projector <laughs> to achieve my needs, not the Ditto one. But the best part about this one is this sliding arm. I don't need to like attach it to my ceiling. It's like this rig is really the selling point of it for me in a New York apartment, especially. So yeah, right now I have it connected. It's all set up with my Bluetooth and my Wi-Fi, but I'm gonna need to test out on the computer ver like app ecosystem of it, seeing if I can upload my own patterns without having a subscription. So TBD, I'll get back to you, but for now it's set up. So we'll see how it goes. Look where I am. <laughs> So I'm sure many of you recognize this room from watching Grace on Instagram, and I certainly talk about her what feels like every single vlog. So this is Grace, aka Weezer Dreams in the flesh. <laughs> Grace and 
I discovered, uh, well, Grace actually discovered that we were neighbors back when I lived in Bay Ridge. And so she messaged me and we became friends and it's been a blossoming friendship ever since. And she's my sewing crafting like maven and knows all there is to know I feel about sewing. Um, but today I'm here because I mentioned in my Vlogmas that I really wanted to check out Grace's stash of vintage patterns because Grace has an incredible selection like stash of vintage patterns especially ones like calvin klein and dkny that i'm really into and i'm sure you could talk more about like other ones that you really like to yeah. collect i'm gonna set this up here so oh know. yeah that's a good spot for it so, for now but yeah okay so yeah. what are the main ones that you say you like really look into not like springing this interview I, on you but like what you mainly kind of i collect, collect specifically the donna karen patterns because mm. the um relationship between Donna Karen patterns and Vogue ended a couple years ago and like that was like an announcement like they weren't even going to sell any of their back stock it was like done they don't have the license to sell them anymore so like instantly it was like oh my gosh hoard all of your Donna Karen yeah, patterns I didn't know that yeah and uh I also co collect the Calvin Klein ones that are also vintage like Calvin Klein I don't remember when they stopped their relationship with Vogue but they were definitely had the relationship when I started sewing as, as a younger person in like the 80s and 90s um I was, well, I started selling in the late 80s, <laughs> but I was buying my own patterns by the late 90s. And so mm -hmm. some of the earlier ones, the vintage ones from the 90s, are ones that I bought when they were brand new. So well, this is one of my boxes. I got many boxes, though. How do you sort all of your uh, patterns or, like, organize them? Um, I organize them by, well, for, for Donna Karen and, and Calvin Klein, they get their own boxes because I have so many of them mm -hmm. at this point. <laughs> Uh, and like I have like a lot of patterns. It's kind of a problem. And some of them are like in different areas because I'm working on them. It's a various... collecting thing and a hobby thing at the same time. For sure. Okay, so like this one and this one. So like I have some stuff in here that's not in those categories, but like finding some goodies. Love this one. Yeah, I traced that one. I think that's why it's in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. What's going on the list? This is mm -hmm. Vogue 1355. Mm -hmm. I like how this one's like a layering item. It's, it feels very like Dune-esque. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites I found so far, this Calvin Klein 1366. It's hard to kind of see the details on the sample, but look at the pattern illustrations. All of these, I guess, knife pleats? Mm, I think they're pin tucks. Pin tucks. Yeah, I love this view A because could you imagine if this was cut into a shirt? I mean, I love it as a dress too. I love that view C also. Yeah, this is definitely going on the list. Post this because I know I've had people like totally <laughs> not patterns. It's so beautiful. Yeah, this is my favorite. I've made it twice. Um, I made view A first when I was a very new sewist and it turned out great, loved it. Um, my best friend has it now. And then I made the flutter sleeve version to wear to Jacqueline's wedding and I graded yes. it up. And I, I love that Look at dress. that sleeve. It's so cute. It's so cute. I'm not so done with it. summery. It's like one of my favorites. Absolute favorites. Yeah, this is definitely going on the list, which is getting quite long. long. <laughs> This is getting expensive. That one, so I'm glad you pointed it out. All right, so interesting knits top. Alert, Donna mm -hmm. Karen for Vogue 1961. Easy, facile. Look at I this. I don't believe that, but <laughs> go for it. This wrap. It's this one. Look at that. Yes. It's got underarm gussets. This Stunning. is probably going to be a fabric monster. Top A. Do you ever follow Beck Visos? Um, yes. So I feel yes, like yes, this yes. looks like a very her Oh, top. totally. Yeah. Beck, we love you. Yes. I, yeah, I love that. <laughs> This one oh, is fun. already fun. on my like saved list on Etsy. I'm definitely gonna be getting this one because of the crisscross back. I mean, I kind of made a dress like that similar before, but yeah, I'm I love this dress, love it. Hello, so I am back from Grace's. I had an amazing time looking through her incredible selection. Her patterns are just crazy. I have a very long list that um, is going to be very expensive <laughs> for me. As you may know, um, vintage patterns are quite pricey, but I'll acquire them slowly over time uh, when I see them. But yeah, there's a few that are like tip top of the list right now that I would really like to make, especially while it's still cold out. Um, but yeah, I wanted to close the loop on the ditto. So I have it set up over here right now. And I'm sad to say I could not get it to project a pattern 
successfully that was outside of the Ditto ecosystem. I also wanted to let you know that the projector does not work without a subscription, even if you're only using patterns you already own, which to me is a huge con of the Ditto. This is a very new feature for them, the bring your own pattern uh, feature is new for them. So I'm hoping that in the future that won't be the case or that they'll get enough feedback that that's not a great business model um, because I think it would be nice if people could buy it just for the hardware or just for the rig um, and even if they don't want to use the Ditto patterns that you can get within the Ditto ecosystem because otherwise really like for me I just need it for the projector and the rig really like this rig is really helpful so I'm still very excited that I want it of course um, but I couldn't get a pattern that I purchased that's not within Ditto to work with the system. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just using this rig for now and Andrew has made this little piece right here that's going to attach another projector that we already have and I'm gonna use that for my class uh, until I can get it figured out with the ditto. I like the piece of equipment, like it's nice, but again, it just, I couldn't get it to work with bringing my own pattern. So new feature though, I think it's still in beta. So I'm sure they'll make improvements. Hopefully in the future though, it will not be exclude, like you have to have a subscription for it. Cause I just think that that would really not be worth it. If you're somebody who sews with a lot of PDF patterns that are not within Ditto. But I think the thing with Ditto too, is that you can like put in your own measurements and it will give you a pattern for you. So if you're really new to sewing, it could be a nice, uh, investment a pricey one but it could be something useful for you but for me it just doesn't really work with the way that I sew so right now it's gonna be kind of like a wait and see watch and see situation um, but I'm gonna use the projector that I already have so I just wanted to close the loop on that and let you guys know about that thank you so much for watching this vlog I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video bye